I think uh, most of you guys that pay attention to what's going on in the YouTube world, um, in the in the lefty commentary world, or 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 just the just the the commentary world in general, um, know that there has been mass demonetization of the left. It's a, a lot harder of a word to, to to say than I anticipated it to be. Uh, but you know, you have channels like Graham Elwood. Uh, who I regularly view, ha who has been demonetized. Uh, uh, Progr Progressive Soapbox, which is uh, Jamal Thomas, I believe. Um, he's been demonetized. I watch his channel uh, quite a bit as well. Uh, Nico House, who I also watch quite a bit, demonetized. Uh, Convo Couch, demonetized. My good friend Ron Placone has had to deal with this several times. My friend Lee Camp has had to deal with this several times. Um, and, uh, you know... What did they get demonetized for? It's always the question, right? What did they get demonetized for? Um, oh, here's some other ones. Frank analysis. And then there was a filmmaker who who goes and films a lot of protests. Um, Ford Fisher. Also been demonetized completely from YouTube. They, they And what does that mean before we get into why? What that means is uh, they can't take super chats. They can't get ad revenue. And they can't get revenue from uh, premium subscribers. Because YouTube has the premium subscribe subs subscriptions as well, uh, so they just can't make any money talking about the stuff that they want to talk about, uh, and that is primarily the reason why they are demonetized on YouTube. And this is a form of financial censorship. Uh, that's really what's going on here. This is a form of financial censorship. What they say is going on um, is that it's harmful content, right? That's that's what they claim. They go, oh, man, this is harmful content. What a scary thing to happen because this is this is uh, harmful content for people. Let me pull up. There we go. I want to show you guys this. Uh, so this is from this is a screen cap of a bunch of different uh, messages that they got. I mean, most of them are pretty similar, but it's, you know, it says due, due to a recent review of our policy specialist carefully. Uh, look at the, the videos you've uploaded to your channel, the Convo Couch, and you know substitute whoever, Jamal Thomas, uh, News to Share, Frank Analysis, Graham Elwood. They're saying uh, significant portion of your cha channel is not in line with YouTube program policies. As of today, your channel is not eligible uh, to uh, monetize, will not have access to monetization tools and features. Please uh, you know, read about the specific policies. And what are they flagged for? Check that out. Harmful content. That's what they've all been demonetized for. Quote, unquote, harmful content, right? What is the harmful content? Uh, well, in terms of Graham Elwood, I know, uh, aside from being talking about similar topics that that I cover on this channel, uh, anti-establishment, uh, anti-corporate, anti-capitalist um, topics, bringing on guests that want to talk about this stuff. <clears throat> uh, they it, recently, Graham and Lee Camp did, dropped a video about the JFK assassinations. I have yet, I've not listened to this yet. I'm <laughs> behind on listening to all my stuff. Um, and the second that happened, the, the video, apparently, I talked to Lee about it, like, within the first 10 minutes, it, like, drops the audio. So they do weird shit all the time. Uh, they've been doing weird shit forever. I mean, both YouTube and Facebook have been doing weird little things to censor uh, various different channels to either hinder their growth or just hinder the channel in general. What did Progressive Soapbox talk about? I mean, very similar stuff to what we've been talking about for four years. Right. Convo couch. Same thing. So and they don't give you any warning. They're just like, hey, this is harmful content. What's harmful content? What is it about what I'm putting out? That's harmful content. Is it harmful to the Democratic Party because we're calling out their their hypocrisies? We're calling out their their fallacies. Is it harmful to the establishment because we're pointing out how they're robbing the worker? Is it harmful to YouTube and Facebook because we're pointing out how they're censoring people, how they're taking people that uh, criticize them, that they don't particularly agree with off of their platform, becoming rather authoritarian? And there are people championing this, right? I mean, there are people championing when Trump got off and the, and the right wingers were deplatformed and yay, deplatforming. 
And now it's come back around. And now they're going after leftists, which is something we all said would happen. This is sort of the pattern of things that happen. We're like, hey, yeah, it's great that Trump isn't going to be bombastic on Twitter. And that's great. But he's always been bombastic on Twitter. And you can't just take down channels that you don't particularly care for. What you should do is learn how to think critically and say, hey, I know why I believe this person is wrong. I know why this person is spouting these sort of belief systems, these inaccurate belief systems. And I know how to counter something like this in the comment sections, in the videos, in rational discourse. If we had that, we wouldn't need tech companies to deplatform voices and opinions that we don't particularly like. Now, I'm sure there are people in, in the Democratic Party. I'm sure there are people in the right wing that are excited about Graham Elwood being deplatformed, that are excited that the Convo Couch is being demonetized, and they can't earn a living off the thing that they do the most. But like I said, they don't give you a reason or explanation. Uh, Ford Fisher, he talks about how he was demonetized. And he did the appeal. And then it took them seven months to reinstate his monetization. Seven months. And they basically admitted that they were wrong. They fucked up. And they didn't give him any money back. Like... Like you took somebody's livelihood away for seven months, admitted that you did that wrongfully, and then you don't compensate them for it is a bunch of bullshit. And there and there are people that will defend these sort of actions from YouTube and Facebook. Oh, well, you shouldn't have said these controversial things. Wait, wait a minute. Don't are you are, because dissent is controversial. You you shouldn't dissent against the government that doesn't give a shit about its people. They they switch it around. They go no no no. The government it's a private company. They have the right to oh so wait a minute. So private companies can now dictate what is and isn't constitutional. Is that where we want to go? So here's something that. Uh, Caitlin Johnstone says um, in regards to all of the all of the censorship that's going on. Let's pull this up. Or I'll read this paragraph here. Speaking for myself, I can say with absolute cer certainty that I would not be able to create content at anywhere near the pace I do were I not making enough money from it to do it full time. Life is far too demanding with far too much else going on for me to be able to maintain anything like daily output, being financially deplatformed and having to do having to get another job would force me uh, down to an essay a week in my spare time. If that anyone who works in independent media full time knows this. And so do the powerful people who are steadily ratcheting up the campaign to silence anyone who hasn't passed through the gatekeepers of plutocratic media. And she is absolutely right, by the way. And I can speak from experience of how difficult it is to maintain a part-time job or a different full-time job and try to produce content on a regular basis. I did that for a number of years. It's exhausting. On top of all of the other life stuff, right? So right now I'm pumping out videos pretty much every day. I'm do I'm, I'm now I'm going into four live streams a week, uh, producing two different podcasts a week and one virtual show a month. That's a lot of content that's coming out from my pages, from my channels. Over the years, um, you know, when I first started doing Forkful of Noodles, it was one two, maybe four videos a week. I didn't have Taboo Table Talk yet. I didn't have the dispatch just yet. Uh, eventually, when I got the uh, Taboo Table Talk, okay, that was a little bit more. Now I'm producing a little bit more content. And I was doing all of this stuff for free. I was pr pretty much looking at what I was making uh, off of stand-up or any other you know part-time gig that I would get. And I was completely exhausted doing it, right? The amount of work that goes into doing a show even like this 
is a lot, right? There's the research aspect of it, taking the notes, making sure I know what I'm talking about, making sure I understand the articles that I'm reading, processing the information properly. Then it's doing the thing in general, uh, whether it's videos, virtual shows, essays, all of that. It's all time consuming. Like this is all, this all takes quite a bit of time. Once you produce the show, I don't have a video editor because I can't afford to pay a video editor right now. Uh, that is something that I would like to do. It's something that's been on my mind for the last two years or so. Um, so I have to edit, then upload, then promote the videos via whatever social media that I can. Then I also do the graphics. So the little logo that you see, the little thing on 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 this side that you see, uh, the uh, the little icons up here. Let me make sure I'm pointing it. Yeah, those all of the uh, the the banners, the you know, all that stuff is done by me. I don't, I can't, I can't pay a graphics person right now. So right now, doing all this stuff because I'm at a point where, yeah, you know, when when I was when I can kind of sustain myself doing it, but it's not gonna, it's like it doesn't sustain me for long term. So now I have a part time job. And now I'm going to get another part-time job. And that's going to add more to it. That means that I'm going to have to decrease the amount of content I create. That's something I talked about a while back. Which means that my live streams will be irregular at best. Which means that, you know, I have to figure out how to balance uh, a home life, a social life with part-time job and creating the content I want to create. Those are all the stressors that exist within this world, within this sphere. That people don't think or consider, right? What people assume is if you are someone in entertainment, oh, you must be able to do it because you're rich, because you have the free time to do it, because you kind of are a little bit more lackadaisical about the way you go about your life. They don't consider things like things in entertainment to be a real job that that actually takes a lot of work and preparation. No one sees the background stuff. I'm not live streaming as I'm doing the research and taking my notes. That'd be boring as shit, wouldn't it? <laughs> but that's what they want. They're financially censoring you. So now Graham Elwood, who has been, who who is another comedian that isn't touring right now, as regular as he did uh, before the pandemic doesn't have that income that he can depend on. So he switched to doing live streams pretty much every day, getting the super chats, getting the patron, uh, the, 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 the sustaining members, the one-time donations. What's, what's going on with Rockfin? He's, he's on there. These are people that are keeping people on their platforms, whether it's Facebook, YouTube, or Rockfin. And Rockfin gets it, right? These alternative platforms like Rockfin, Minds.com, they get it. They're like, yeah, the users are the ones that are creating the the, the content that gets people to come on our platform, use our website, generate traffic. Uh, you know, that, that, that if they put advertising on there, the advertisers are getting seen because they're coming to... Uh, Convo Couch or Nico House or Frank Analysis or Progressive Sop or Soapbox or whatever it might be. So they should, in return, value the content creators. But they don't. What they look at it as is very similar to how a boss looks at a worker. If you don't do what I say, then I can take your livelihood away. And I will. And that's exactly what they're doing here. They're saying if you don't, if you don't bend the knee to establishment talking points, to uh, state department or intelligence community talking points, then we'll demonetize you. And yeah, you can put stuff up on your channel. Yeah, you can say, take donations from various other, you know, Venmo, Patreon, or what have you. You can do all that, but you're not going to be able to make any any additional money off of it. So if 30% or 40% of your income comes from Super Chat contributions, uh, YouTube ad revenue, uh, premium revenue, then YouTube is basically saying we're going to cancel out about 30% to 40% of your of your income. And in, And right now, Every little bit helps. Every little bit counts. Every little bit fucking make sure that you are able to put food on your table and keep up on your bills.
what happened with my channel was, you know, I, I started this channel way back in college just to put up like stand up clips that I was doing in college. And so that's primarily what it was. Uh, there was I, I wasn't like a regular content creator on YouTube until much later in my life. And then once I started doing that, I had maybe a little over a hundred subscribers. And then after after I started regularly putting out content, my subscriber count starts going up. Right? People are like, "Oh shit, you can come back to this channel. You can check out more stuff. I like what this individual is doing. That's very cool." So my subscriber count went up. My views were going up, uh, not astronomically, but I doubled my subscriber count. I went from getting ten or twelve views to fifty to a hundred views on a on a video throughout a week. Uh, which is awesome. And then once they kind of saw that, all of a sudden, less and less people were able to see my videos. My videos weren't being put up on, you know, the homepage or or as recommended videos uh, or related videos and so on and so forth. So I saw this very slow, like I went, I you know, I doubled my subscriber count within the first year and then it became kind of slow. It was like, okay, I'm slowly creeping up to 300. I'm slowly creeping up there. Eventually, um, I think 2018 was was the year where my subscriber count all of a sudden started shooting through the roof. Videos were starting to do just as well again, right? Uh, I was getting those those regular views on a weekly basis. And then YouTube started doing something kind of fishy, and I can still see them doing it to this day, where one of my videos will start approaching like 50 to 75 to 100 views, depending on the topic. Sometimes they go up to like 400 views, depending on the topic and depending on who shares them. But the second those videos start doing really well, they won't stop the the particular video. But the rest of the videos that I put up, let's say I put up a video four hours later, that video will get two views, three views. Wait a minute. What the hell happened? There was a bunch of people that were liking and commenting on the previous video. And now now nobody is able to see so so they censor my channel. So now they prevent the growth of my channel before I even have an opportunity to get to the level where I can monetize myself. So on YouTube, you know, I've, I've had some people ask me, like, why don't I have uh, super chats uh, available on my on my live streams? And it's because I don't have the subscriber count because YouTube has YouTube doesn't show my channel to enough people. And then if I share it on Facebook or Twitter or what have you, because the content is not particularly what YouTube wants it to be, what social media, these social media giants want it to be, they don't show it to as many people. And the only time they show it to people is when they can create an argument out of it, because those arguments keep people on the platform. So if they can get a negative response off of one of my links, off of one of my channels, off of one of my videos, then they'll share it out to the people that they know aren't going to enjoy my stuff. So it doesn't help my subscriber count anyway. It doesn't help my view count anyway. So they find these different little ways to to prevent their channel to grow and prevent your, you from being monetized. So then they can come back and be like, oh, well, your channel's not really being shown to all that many people anyway. So why would we give you the ability? You're, you're not doing that well for us. So they create these hierarchies, right? And that sucks because it's manufactured. All of the all of this censorship is very manufactured on YouTube. And now they're doing even more of it. They're financially restricting people from being able to earn an income off of what they're saying. And this is thought police shit. Oh, you're going to criticize... The Democratic, oh, you're going to talk about stuff that isn't accepted in the establishment, isn't accepted in the corporate narrative. Okay, then you don't get to make money off of it. That is a form of censorship. People don't think that economic sanctions and economic censorship is uh, dangerous, is detrimental, but it absolutely is. By the way, what they're doing, this is basically the principle of economic sanctions, this is what they do to other countries. This is what they do to countries like Iran and Venezuela and Bolivia, the countries that don't want to uh, join in on America's neoliberal capitalist fucking hellscape. So when these countries push back, they go, sanctions. You can't get the income that you need to run your social programs. 
because you won't let us control you. That's how the United States operates. And that's how the tech companies are operating to, to, to again, basically the same thing to, to, to now the socialists that are on uh, YouTube, the lefties that are on YouTube. Our lives are stressful enough. There's a lot of juggling and balancing that you have to do in order to in order to maintain this lifestyle, right? Uh, this lifestyle of being able to do what you want to do, earn an income from it. And I'm not talking about getting uber rich or anything. I'm not talking about trying to become a millionaire off of content creation or anything. I'm talking about being able to pay my bills, being able to cover rent, my car payments, buy groceries, and take care of the bills. That's what I'm talking about. And having a little extra so that I don't go destitute. And they're controlling that now. Now, if I had five or six different ways, right, and 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 a lot of people do, right? We have the sustaining memberships, like somebody brought up Cash App earlier, Venmo, Bitcoin, Rockfin, the tips, everything like that. There are various different ways, but the largest way, I mean, people spend years curating and building their YouTube channels and their Facebook pages and their Twitter and all this other stuff because it's been around for quite some time. Um Susie Dawson brought this up when when she was talking to Lee Camp about Panquake, uh, which I will get to in just a moment. She talked about how Twitter was the the ground floor, the activists, the average people. And then the blue checkmark people came in. The celebrities followed, right? Because they want to be just as popular as these average people. They're like, oh, we can connect with regular people and still be celebrities and still be idolized on this platform. Same thing happened with Facebook. It was kind of this cool underground thing for people to be a part of, and then it became corporatized. It became public. There was a board. There are some people you have to answer to. Oh, we have to make ad revenue. We have to sell sponsorships now. And that goes down the line of corruption. These are multi-millionaires or billionaires at this point that are essentially controlling who gets to say what on their platform. They might have not taken down these channels yet, but what's to stop them from doing that? To say, well, okay, we 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 monetarily censored you and tried to prevent you from creating, you know, all of your content. Like let's say, let's say Graham Elwood now has to go work at a at a coffee shop. I'm not saying that he is in this hypothetical situation here. Uh, I don't I don't need people tweeting at Graham to be like, Chris said that you're working at a coffee shop on in Long Beach. Which one? I want to come say hello. You know, like I don't need don't do that. <laughs> this is a hypothetical. Let's say he's go he were he is now working at a coffee shop to supplement that 30% of income. Uh, that he's or forty percent or fifty percent that he's not getting from YouTube anymore. And he still continues to churn out videos. Maybe it's not fifteen or twenty. Maybe it's ten to twelve in a week now. And YouTube is like, what the fuck, man? I, we tried to stop you. Fine. Let's say that this is continuing harmful content and and just censor your channel completely. So the next step will be, oh, we'll 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 start taking people off of your channel, uh, and we'll show your 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 channel to less people, and justify you know being able to take you down later. And then if that doesn't work, then they'll just delete his channel outright. They did that already. It was a couple days ago I talked about um, how the how academics this this conference that talks about censorship and how censorship is being used in the digital age. Their entire conference was taken off of YouTube, disappeared, no warning, no nothing, just disappeared. They're doing that to academics. That's where this is headed. They do these tests. See. Uh, I have mentioned this before, and it's worth mentioning again, and I will mention it again. 800 independent journalists from the left and the right were um, systematically removed from Facebook and Twitter about two years ago. Not one corporate media outlet talked about it. 
We talked about it. The independent media talked about it. Nobody else did. That was a test to basically see if they can get away with it. And they did. And now they're doing it again. How, where, where on CNN is this being covered? CNN doesn't care. CNN is within the accepted uh, you know, framework of shit that you can talk about. So they don't give a shit. Why would they care? They don't have to cover this stuff. So where do we go, right, is the question. Well, you go to networks like Rockfin. You go to Minds.com. You support things like PanQuick. If you don't know what PanQuick is, I would highly recommend going and checking that out. Susie Dawson's been making the rounds and talking to a very various people about what PanQuick is. Uh, it's blockchain. It's transparent. It doesn't collect your data. It doesn't mine your data. And the idea is to create a, a platform and a network that is regularly monitored, that gives you access to free speech, um, and you can see where things are. And and if somebody is going to be taken down, like like they you know they're not going to tolerate shit like uh, child pornography or child violence or um, you know calls to violence, uh, those sort of things. Um, they will monitor that, and you can they will take those channels down, and you can see in the blockchain where it was taken down, why it was taken down, who was the one that reported it, who was the one that took it down. And it's very transparent. This is not transparent. Harmful content. What's harmful content? Why is it considered harmful harmful content? What about this is harming? Who is it harming in general? This is where we should go. So if if you are somebody that's pretty exhausted and sick of, you know, YouTube and Facebook censorship, there are alternatives out there and we need more average regular people for, first of all to start listening and understanding this world. Um because I don't think average regular people have an understanding of uh of 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 the content creator world. Um you know, because if if I could sustain myself just off of touring the country 40 some odd weeks out of the year i would have done it uh i was able to pay my bills but this was a little bit of an extra supplement to be like cool i can cover a you know like my, my gas is taken care of this month because of the contributions i got from doing my videos and because of generous people like you guys that donated to the channel became sustaining members and things of that sort but right now you know if youtube really gave a shit um, they could have done something, uh, uh, and this is this is one of the last things I'll say about this for now, because I'm sure this is going to be an ongoing story. Um, but here's something that I think YouTube YouTube could have done if they actually gave a shit about content creators on their channel and not the advertisers, not the corporate oligarchs that big tech is is uh, is is catering to. They could have said, well, this pandemic is here. There's a lot of entertainers out of work that are going to shift to our platform. Guess what? We're opening up our monetizations. Even if you don't have a thousand subscribers on your channel, we're still going to allow super chats. You can still monetize your channel with ads. Uh, that way you can earn an income off of the content that you create if you create it regularly, if that's something that you're interested in doing. And, you know, holy shit, that would have been incredible. But they didn't. What they did do was send out a notice saying, hey, we can get rid of your channel, uh, take down videos, censor your videos, uh, no questions asked. By the way, it's the algorithm doing it because we don't have enough people on staff, even though we're one of the largest fucking companies on the planet, controlled by an even larger company. We just don't have the staff to have people looking at uh, copyright claims and disputes of this nature. So they went the other way. They didn't go to the compassionate way. They didn't go the reasonable way. They went away to say, "What is the what is the easiest way to 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 you know curate content on our on our platform?" And again, if you say, "Well, that's their right." Then again, I ask you, do you really want private corporations to determine speech? What is and isn't appropriate to say? 
Then what happens? Let's say they lock you out of Amazon. Let's say they let's say that they're 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 tied in with a bank, and they don't like what you say, and they go, you know what? We're gonna sh- we're gonna freeze this person's account. That's the direction we're heading in, where you're giving the technocracy a lot more power than you need to. Let's look at some contents. Contents? Comments. Holly, uh, Jamal Thomas, he was on this morning. Yeah, I, um, I, I need to catch more of uh, his his stuff. I do enjoy the the stuff that he puts out. Plus, he's got a bunch of Star Trek stuff in his background, uh, and I appreciate that as as a big old nerd. Uh, I appreciate that. My my girlfriend got me this pin, the uh, Live Long and Prosper pin. So, uh, Danny, good to see you. Shared the vid. Meeting in two minutes. Watch it later. Okay, well. Uh, if you're watching this later, thank you. You're a peach. Uh, and, uh, you know, leave a comment later and I'll probably respond to it. No warning, no explanation. That's what they do. There's the, I, I almost had my channel deleted over copyright claims, uh, from my own stuff. Like, uh, I, I've, I've talked about that before, but CD baby, uh, which is my album distributor, the, 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 you know, the company that I use for album distributing my albums is an independent artist. They have the copyright uh, for for YouTube music, and because I put up clips on my channel to, sh- to of my own material that I own, uh, YouTube put a copyright claim on my channel. And when I tried to dispute it, they said I have thirty days to for uh, CD Baby to clear the copyright claim. And if they don't, then YouTube has the right to delete my channel, no questions asked. Right? Uh, so they don't they don't give you that sort of stuff. And there's nobody you can talk to to like sort this stuff out. Rockfin is very supportive. Indeed, they are. Um, they they are very quick to respond to emails and, and troubleshoot and take care of stuff. They're very good at that. Uh, like blacklisting except with money now. That's exactly what economic sanctions and economic censorships is is it's just blacklisting people with with money. And and quite honestly, I'm I'm a little surprised that it took them this long. But the internet is kind of something new, so they're applying these old tactics to something new, and and it might take them a little bit longer to catch up to something like that. Uh, blue check can get stuffed. <laughs> yeah, a lot of blue che- <laughs> a lot of blue check people. The, the people that I contend with the most are the are the major defenders of the blue check people. So if I say something about a blue check person on on Twitter or something, it's their followers, their their sycophants that come up and and attack me on Twitter. Uh, like I I know I mentioned I talked about Nira Tandon and uh, her her sycophants came out and I mean everybody was like delete the tweet, this is wrong, delete the tweet, delete the tweet. Why do you want me to delete it? I mean if if you think I'm wrong and you're and you're you know, taking this moral high horse position of how much better than you are than me, then why do you want me to delete the tweet? Aren't you just going to use it to point? And then the other thing they do is they'll scream about deleting the tweet. They'll say a bunch of shit and then they'll block me. So I can't even respond or have like a rational conversation with these people because they're not interested in having a rational conversation. These people want to live in their bubble and their bubble alone, and they don't give a shit about any other points of view and and challenging them, challenging their, their belief systems, learning more about other perspectives and other cultures and other ideologies. So they are pro censorship by hitting the block button for, and I'm not even going after them, right? I'll respond to them once or twice. I'm not, harping on them over and over i'm not targeting them day in and day out they just don't like what i have to say which means like you don't have to follow me or 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 or, uh you know respond to my shit i don't like what ted cruz has to say i don't follow ted cruz because i don't like what he has to say and the New York Post story about Hunter Biden. Yeah, they were. Uh, there was a lot of that sort of stuff. Glenn Greenwald got uh, left the intercept because they wouldn't let him talk about Hunter Biden. So you know, there's a lot of this sort of stuff that goes on. Um, and and I don't think the the average person that's on the pulse of all of this stuff really really is aware of it. Someone that watches corporate media is not aware of what's going on is not aware of the 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 larger censorship 
um, apparatuses that are uh, that exist within within this government structure. He wanted to write about Joe Biden's response to Hunter Biden and Glenn Greenwald wasn't allowed to cover it. And then he just, you know, now he's doing it independently. He's writing on Substack. He's he's a contributing writer to various uh, news organizations. Switching over to Rockfin here. Uh, let's see. Aram, YouTube, Google, Facebook, etc. are getting taxpayer dollars for aligning with establishment narratives and objectives. Uh, yes. The, yeah. And, and they're also, you know, I mean, they're 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 buying out legislators uh, who don't really understand what. Um, what what YouTube is or 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 the way that it works or how algorithms are are present in the background and how the algorithms are making decisions and things of that sort. Uh and and they're you they're basically buying out legislators to legislate on their behalf and let them control the First Amendment, which is very, very um very, very destructive. Uh, Sarah, when YouTube started removing videos of Obama drinking flip water because it's harmful content, ha! Yes, they should have. They should have. But he did. But he did. Right? He drank that water, and he was like, "Everything's fine in Flint," and everybody was like, "Is it though?" I kind of don't think it is. I kind of think you're a crazy fucking liar right now. Uh, the people who uh, ARM says the people who need uh, to hear this stuff are either simply dismissive. Or at brunch. <laughs> um, yes, uh, that is the unfortunate part of this, isn't it? Is is I have I have friends, you know, people that were a lot closer to me, uh, and then uh, they found out exactly who I was and and how I think and uh, all that kind of stuff, and and they and they bailed out, and they are dismissive of what I say. If I'm critical of uh, the Obama administration, if I'm critical of the Democrats, they come out and. They'll dismiss me and be like, "Oh, it's uh, you're you're hyperbolizing. You're 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 using a straw man, or this are this is a Republican tactic." And you go, "No, I, I think it's just what's going on. It's just a fact of the, it's history." And then they go, "No, no, it's not my history." And they ignore it and they dismiss it. And they ignore and and that's and then they go to brunch, right? <laughs> the br the Biden brunch specials are are off the chain right now. They are off the chain. Uh, Holly says, when Obama drank that flip water, there was a massive jaw drop. It, there was a massive jaw drop. But that's them controlling the narrative. And that's essentially what they're trying to do here. They don't want people calling out the Democrats for what they are. They don't want people pointing out the fact that the Democrats and Republicans are both a pro-war, pro-capitalist, anti-worker party. They're both they're both that they don't legislate on behalf of the people. And when you call that shit out, they're like, we got to squash the narrative. Get rid of them. And then there are people that cheer that sort of stuff. And part of the reason I, I we, we talked about this earlier is a sunk cost fallacy, right, uh, is because they have invested themselves into the Democratic Party. They feel like they are good people that have invested themselves into this party. And when you call out the party for what it is, including using facts and video examples of how how they are. Uh, corporatists and how they are anti-worker and how they've legislated, you know, against the people for a very long time, uh, they can't rationalize it. So they have to, they, because of the sunk cost, because they've invested so much of who they are as an individual, they can't rationalize it. So they attack who, you know, it's, it's to kill the messenger policy is what they use. And it's unfortunate. But again, the major thing that censorship does is that it, it, uh, it, it gets rid of critical thinking. You don't get to think about, okay, why am I against this idea? You know, what what do I believe in and how do I communicate that belief? Let's say that this is true about whatever about, about the Democratic Party. Well, what does that mean? You know, they don't ask those kind of questions. That sort of stuff isn't encouraged. And it's not encouraged by either party, by the way, which is a very authoritarian thing to do. And again, this is thought police shit. They are telling you what you can and can't say on these platforms that are supposed to be free and open for speeches, which is part of the reason why, you know, I'm trying to really build the Rockfin channel. 
thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please make sure that you hit the like button, hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook, especially Facebook and YouTube. They often uncensor pe uh, un unsubscribe people and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, uh, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. There you'll find past episodes of, uh, of various shows that I, uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows, the Forkful of Noodles live virtual comedy shows. Uh, the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website. But if you're also on financial stable ground, you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets and bonus content. You can go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to, to make any kind of financial contributions. But if you can't, it's not a necessity. Most of my stuff is is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H -H -A, and I hope to see you at the next video.